Hey, welcome back. My name is Hayden, and this is the fourth Sea Perch video in this series. This video is a complete guide to making your Sea Perch controller. Don't worry about how long this video is, it's split up into three parts. The first will cover building the controller that came with the build box, if you got one. The second will go over how to build your own controller from scratch without the circuit board, so watch that part if you haven't bought the build box. Skip whichever of these two sections that don't apply to you. The final section will go over testing your controller, so you'll want to watch that. Without further ado, let's start. First, we're going to assemble the controller with the parts you got from the Sea Perch build box. Again, if you didn't buy it, skip to the next section. Now, I didn't buy it either, so I can't build it with you, but I have a lot of experience soldering onto circuit boards from my digital electronics class, and I can explain it to you with pictures. You will need tools to solder, wire stripper, wire cutters, a screwdriver, the control box shell and lid, eight screws, four black and four silver, the printed circuit board, two dual momentary or toggle switches, two single momentary or push button switches and their caps, the switch washer and nuts, which may be on the switches already, 18 gauge two core wire, two alligator clips and their insulators, the RJ45 connector jack, and the fuse in its holder. First, solder the fuse holder onto the circuit board right here. Do not put the actual fuse into its holder until the end. Insert the fuse holder on the side with all the white lettering so that the metal terminals stick out the holes on the other side. Tape this in place and flip the board over. Then, solder the prongs in place. To do this, you have to first hold the soldering iron to the metal for a few seconds. Then, push the solder onto the connection so that it flows over it. Then, remove the solder, then the iron. Soldering each connection should only take about 5 seconds, as you don't want to risk damaging the circuit board from heating it up too much. If the solder doesn't flow over the connection, try cleaning and tinning the soldering iron. Also, let the board cool a bit in between soldering each connection. A nicely soldered connection should look conical, with a pointy end. If there are any holes, you need more solder. Also, avoid bridging the solder between two connections. Finally, you can remove the tape when all the connections are soldered. Repeat this step for each of the board components. The two toggle switches, the two push button switches, and the RJ45 connector jack. Remember to wait a moment between soldering each connection so that the board doesn't get too hot. Now, take the 18 gauge two core wire and put it through the controller lid hole in the bottom middle. Then, split the ends about four inches using the wire cutters and you can just pull them apart with your hands the rest of the way. Now tie a strain relief knot at the beginning of the split. Strip between a quarter and a half of an inch of insulation off of the ends using the wire strippers. Insert the copper wire into the board where it says plus 12V red and insert the silver wire where it says minus 12V black. The wire should go on the same side as the components. Twist the ends of the exposed wire if you're having trouble getting the strands through. Then solder these wires to the circuit board. It will require more solder than the other components. Once the soldering is done, you can insert the fuse into its holder by trimming the fuse's terminals down to about a quarter of an inch and then just inserting it in. The final step is putting the alligator clips on the end of the 18 gauge wire. Split it apart about six inches, just like you did on the other end. First using the wire cutters and then just pulling it apart the rest of the way. Then strip between a quarter and a half of an inch of the insulation off of both ends and twist the exposed wire. Now slide the alligator clip insulators onto both ends, small hole first. The red one should go around the copper wire, and the black one should go around the silver wire. After that, you need to loosen the screws on your alligator clips. Don't remove them though. Slide the exposed wire up through the hole in the back of the alligator clip. Then wrap that exposed part around the screw, and then tighten the screw. Now solder the wire and the screw together. Do this for both ends of the wire, and slide the insulators over the clips when they're cooled. That's all you'll want to do now before testing, so skip to the final section. Alright, time to assemble the controller from scratch. It's a bit less straightforward than making the controller that came with the build box, but to be honest, I prefer doing it this way as you can see how the electricity travels and makes a circuit. You will need tools to solder, masking tape or some kind of tape like this, a sharpie, a little plastic box like this with a lid here with holes for screws on the back to use for your controller case, a drill and a quarter inch drill bit, optionally a vise, two dual momentary or toggle switches, two single momentary or push button switches, about a foot of your Cat5 wire that you've cut off from the rest of it, about five to six feet of 18 gauge two core wire, two feet of both red and black 22 gauge wire, electrical tape, one of these kinds of fuse holders, a fuse, two alligator clips and the red and black insulators, and sandpaper. First, we've got to get your controller box ready by drilling all the holes. Grip the box with your hands like you would an Xbox or PlayStation controller. 
in order to get a feel for where you want to put the holes for your switches. These holes can pretty much go anywhere on the box, but just don't put them together like this or else the switches will be too close in the box. So space out where you want to put the holes a bit like this. Typically, the toggle switches go under your thumbs and the push button switches go under your pointer fingers. But you do you. Whatever you think would be best for the driver on your team. You also need a hole in the bottom and out the top. Now that you know where you want to put the holes, get your masking tape and put it on the box, put your hand on and mark right under your fingers, like this. Don't forget the top and bottom holes. Now put the box in the vise if you want to. Now you get your drill and your drill bit and drill the holes that you've marked. Once you've drilled all your holes, you can peel off your tape. Now, get your Cat5 wire and peel off the outer casing. You may need the help of some tools to get you started, but once you get the wires out, you can just pull on them like this, and it'll come right out of the case. You now have all your pairs of wire. To be clear, yours should be a bit longer than mine. You should have blue, green, orange, and brown. The solid wires are positive and the striped are negative. I'm going to refer to these wires as the colored wires. Also, cut your two feet of black and red 22 gauge wire into four equal length six inch segments. I will refer to these wires as the red positive and the black negative wires. Also go ahead and strip between a quarter and half an inch of the insulation off of all of the ends of all of the wires. Now it's time to attach the wires to your switches. We'll start with the more complicated toggle switches. On these switches, the red positive and black negative wires will go on the two middle terminals. It does not matter if the red is on the left and the black is on the right or vice versa, they just have to go in the two middle terminals. This next part is a bit tricky, so bear with me. You're gonna take your blue wire and the brown wire. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take about two inches of the brown wire and you're gonna cut it off like this and then you're gonna strip the ends. These wires are gonna be your jumper cables. You're gonna wire them up so that they connect opposite corners. In other words, from here to here and from here to here. Lastly, these blue wires are going to go right next to each other on two terminals on the end, sharing the terminals with the brown jumper wire. Attach the wires to the terminals by putting the exposed wire through the hole and then wrapping it around the terminal. Now solder each connection to the terminal. Using your soldering iron and your solder, first heat up one of the terminals by holding the tip of the soldering iron to the connection. Then put the solder onto the connection in between the soldering wire and the terminal. Push the solder so that it flows over the connection. When your fitter is soldering, it should look a little something like this. You can see the solder connecting the terminals to the wires. You can see the red and black wire in the middle terminals. You can see the brown wires jumping from corner to corner, and you can see the blue wires on the bottom next to each other. You can interchange the red and black wires, and you can interchange the blue striped and solid wires. Remember to let the switch cool down in between soldering each connection as it can get quite hot. Do this for your other toggle switch, except using the green wires this time. Now it's time for your push button switches. These are a lot simpler. Take a very close look at your push button switch. From left to right, you should see C, N, O, and N, C corresponding with each of the terminals. The black negative wire will go on NC, the red positive wire will go on NO, and your colored wire pair will go on C. Since you have two push button switches, the solid colored orange wire will go on one, and the striped orange wire will go on the other. Wrap the exposed wire through and around the terminal like you did on the other switches and solder. Your finished solder connection should look like this. Do this for both of your push button switches. For all of them, first you're gonna screw this little nut on all the way to the bottom, and then you're going to slide the little washer on top, like that. Do this for all of your switches, including your toggle switches. Make sure that the little lips on these washers go downward, like this. Now get your box, take off the lid, and put all of your switches in the right holes. Now take the other washer and nut and put them on all the switches from the outside. You can tighten with something like needle nose pliers. I found that my single momentary switches didn't quite stick out the top enough, so I'm going to remove the nut and washer that I already put on. After doing that, I now have room to put on the top washer and nut. Now go ahead and put the caps from the push button switches on. Also, if you took off these rubber grips for your toggle switches, you can put those back on as well. It should now look like an organized mess in here. Now get your 18 gauge two core wire. Now split it apart about four inches on one end and six on the other, and strip about half an inch of the insulation off of all the ends. Of the two cores, decide which one will be positive and which will be negative. Now take this exposed wire and pull it apart about half and half, like that. 
and put this wire up through the bottom hole in your controller. One of these guys will be positive and one will be negative. Twist two of your red positive wires with one of the halves on the 18 gauge wire that you decided would be positive. Get your other two red positive wires and twist them with the other half and twist it all together to make one big old wire bunch. Do the same with your black negative wires. Twist two around one of the halves and twist the other two around the other half. To be clear, you're not soldering any of your colored wires here. When you're done, you should have a big old hub for your red and black wires. Now solder it all together. This will require a lot more solder than your other connections. Make sure there's solder covering all of the wires. Your connections don't have to be pretty, they just have to work. Once your connections are cooled, wrap them in electrical tape the best you can, like this. We're almost done. Go to the other end of your 18 gauge wire that you split apart. Trace on the side that you decided would be positive and cut off the, about the length of your fuse holder. We're going to attach it here. Strip all the ends and twist it around the fuse holder, like this, and solder. Once the connection is soldered and cooled, you can wrap it in electrical tape. Lastly, we're going to attach alligator clips onto the end of this 18 gauge wire. First, you wanna take your insulators and slide them on a small hole first. Put the red one on the side with the fuse holder. Put the black one on the other side. Then you're going to need to solder the end of the 18 gauge wire to the alligator clip. Different alligator clips can have different ways to do this. Some have a little screw that you can wrap the exposed wire around. Others have little holes in the top. The one I have has a little up and down space. If yours just has the hole, what you want to do is you want to roughen the top a bit using your sandpaper and then solder the exposed wire to that part. Next step is just to slide the insulators back down over the clips. You can now put the fuse itself into the fuse holder. Like that. All that's left to do is test your controller. All right, you've made your controller, now it's time to test it. Before you do, it's a good idea to go back and look through your controller to make sure that there's no accidental solder bridges. Double and triple check this. Also, for all of you who built your controller from scratch, make sure all of the ends of your colored wires aren't touching by pulling them apart. There are two ways to test your controller. One is with a digital multimeter, and the other is just trial and error. The multimeter just negates the need to replace your fuse if there is a soldering mistake, as you can test your controller without the fear of breaking it. Take your multimeter and turn it to the continuity setting. It should display a 1. Touch the prongs of the multimeter together. It should read 0 or close. Connect the alligator clips to the prongs. It should still read 1. If it doesn't, there is a short circuit somewhere. Stop and recheck for solder bridges. If it is still a 1, you can continue testing. Press and toggle each of the switches one at a time. Because the motors are not hooked up yet, there should still not be continuity when you activate the switches. So the multimeter should continue to read 1. If it doesn't, stop and recheck the entire controller for shorts and solder bridges bridges. I say the entire controller because it can be a problem on another switch that causes another one to make the multimeter go off when you press it. The way to check your controller without the multimeter is to just put in the fuse and hook up the controller to the battery. If the fuse blows or you see a spark, it is the equivalent of the multimeter reading a zero or close when it should be reading a one. Remove the battery, fix any solder bridges or short circuits, replace the fuse, and try again. Using a multimeter will save you a lot of fuses, but not everyone has one, which is why I included this other method. Now that we know there aren't any shorts, you can check each of your switches with a thruster. If you haven't prepared yours yet, I have a video on that. But you can use an LED or a motor that you have lying around. Hook up your controller to power and hold together your thruster's wires with a pair of colored wires. Now activate the switch and see if the motor comes on. If it does, try with each of the other pairs of colored wires to confirm that every switch works in every position. If the motor doesn't turn on or is slow or weak, you might not have enough solder on a few of your connections. Recheck, repair, and try again. The final step is to screw everything in place with your screwdriver. On the build box controller, just put the circuit board into the larger part of the shell with the push button switches sticking out of the top, and screw it in with the four silver screws in the corners. Then screw the lid of the shell on with the last four screws. On the controller built from scratch, just stick all of the colored wires out of the hole at the top, like this, and then stuff all of the other wires into the controller and put on the lid. You can screw the lid on using the screws that came with the box. All right, your controller is all done. In my next video, I go over putting your frame, thrusters, and controller all together, along with adding a hook and how to make your RV neutrally buoyant. If you don't have your frame or thruster done yet, go watch my videos on those topics. I'll see you there.